So getting into volume 13 of So I'm a Spider, So What, this is where things really now start to heat up. All the pieces of the chessboard are moving forward, we're starting to see a lot of things move into motion, we're understanding a lot more of the backstory of the motives, the drives. There is a little bit of repetition of repeating stuff, but that to me is actually really helpful because of the fact that I took a, such a long break since I had read the other volume, so having some re-exposition dumping can be very useful as long as it's not just like over the top, which is one of the things that I do like about some series. I mean, if I had to compare to another series that did this kind of stuff, uh, the Rising of the Shield Hero, at the beginning of every volume, they will do like a small exposition dump, but it's always like, honestly, in my opinion, a little bit tedious because they over repeat themselves and it goes on and on and on but with this they explain the major key stuff the stuff that's really important the stuff that you need to know and adds a little bit of extra stuff to just kind of give you a little bit more to work with so it's one of those things that I really do like is that re-explaining things in a way that doesn't feel too repetitious is very important and that's what I do definitely like about so I'm a spider so what then you get into the whole legendary class monsters and then doing the power leveling stuff. This is another thing that I really love about So I'm a Spider So What is the game mechanic systems make so much more sense. A lot of these kind of style of stories where they are isekai, power fantasy, game mechanics, one of the big problems is some of these light novels will add systems upon systems upon systems or just make the systems not very easy to understand and digest and they just over convoluted. And even though... So I'm a Spider So Ward has like a lot of power progression and I mean some insane power. I mean they be as characters be can become gods and unlock special like administrative access and you can have all these crazy things but it's understandable and it's like core aspects to those characters and then there's special little powers that they all get based on their reincarnations like it's all very simple and understandable. It's like bite-sized information fed to you and it's just as I said, it's digestible, but also with the fact that they do re-explain some minor things as things go on, but not over-the-top re-exposition dumping, it really complements each other very well. And that's the thing, it's the power scaling, and that's something that I wrote in my notes, because I think the power scaling in this series is done very well, even though, yes, you're getting to god, well, they are like godlike powers, maybe not as good as these, but... It's, uh, it's digestible, it's understandable, and it really functions quite well in a series like this. There are a couple of other light novel series out there that have these kinds of game mechanics type systems, but they layer too many systems on, and then they kind of forget about old systems and add new systems, and the whole point is just to kind of keep you like occupied of, ooh, what's the new system they're going to add, but then ignore about all the others that are kind of left into the dust. So how they've done this is perfect, especially with like the seven deadly sins and those kinds of powers and how they stay relevant, but they were like, you you understood them at the start. They weren't as like the big grand things. You were kind of like, okay, these are interesting. These have got some major effects. And then as you go on, you understand them more and it lays them on and it keeps them relevant. That is very good about a series. I think that is very well done and I like how they do that. But this volume itself is just phenomenal. The whole build up, the whole attacking the humans, getting the hero out there, defeating the hero, trying to use the weapon, so that they don't have that one-shot weapon to go against the actual demon lord. But another interesting thing is as well is them trying to preserve using energy because of course they're killing all these people to get all this energy going and going and going so they can do a big system reboot. But this is where they're a little bit scared of like, okay, well we need to get rid of the hero. We need to like throw them somewhere where they're not going to get in our way. And so killing the first hero, sure, uh, they, they were hoping that they were going to use the weapon and now of course the reincarnation individual is the hero but they were really hoping to kind of at least Wyatt was hoping to get into the administration system and get rid of the hero system but they really didn't want to and the reason why it's so important to keep the hero preoccupied is because of how the system works where the hero is always meant to beat the demon lord even if the demon lord is a hundred times stronger than the hero the system will feed energy and exp will just power into the hero because of how it's designed to overcome the demon lord which means you're then going to lose energy that's already been given through all the deaths to then allow them to defeat the demon lord that's a lot of wasted energy and that honestly when you think about it, the whole system in itself is extremely, extremely flawed, but that's 
clearly by design. Like D has designed it in such a way that it's just flawed in its own nature and that it's kind of like more of an entertainment and they clearly are getting bored of it because nothing really interesting has happened. But it's like, if you were trying to create a system that made sense, this is the worst way to go about it. I mean, I understand trying to make it so that the hero is always stronger than the demon lord because it's kind of that hero and villains kind of thing. But at the same time, it's like, you're chewing up a lot of energy as well. And I mean, the best strategy, as I mentioned in my previous video, is to have the demon lord just never fight the hero. Just always use the demon lord to fight everyone but the hero and they just become stronger but then find someone else to do the fighting for the demon lord to defeat the hero. And I think that's the only way to go about it. it it's it's a bit of a weird system but it, yeah, it's the best way to go about it. Again, with the whole legendary class stuff, beasts and monsters and stuff, that also shows that some things can live for a really long time and accumulate exp and energy which then needs to feed into the endless cycle and then destroying it and collecting all that energy and giving power levels so that their army is stronger using that and building on weapons and all that kind of stuff. it's it's really cool i really do enjoy it especially a certain little vampire girl and her little backstory about how she persuade all the boys and <laughs> it's kind of funny like they're all going through their teenagers again and so vampy is going through that puberty stage and she's getting all stressed out i wonder what that stress is and then ended up making like a whole entire academy her little sort of plaything. just the way white always grounds her is just the one thing that i really love like i really find vampy probably one of my favorite characters along with white and then of course the demon lord and that's the thing like in the previous volumes i just don't really care about the heroes like sure i understand why they're important i've said that in a million videos i understand the relevance and the importance of those characters but at the same time when you get to those parts you just don't really care as much like it's like eh, yeah sure you know they need to be there to explain everything and their point of view and all that kind of stuff, but it's like, mmm, still don't care. One thing though I will say is the new hero and, tr and how White's trying to get his taboo up, that's really crafty. Like, that's a pretty good strategy. Like, White is really tactical with her sort of strategy and especially with like oh i'll kill all these people make him resurrect them and then every time he resurrects them he's going to get the taboo up and so once he gets his taboo to the right level to the max level then he will find out about everything and that's where it's going to be interesting like is he going to change sides because that's a big that's a big revelation i think it's a clever strategy like if you can't beat the hero then ex like you have to explain it to them this is what's going on but to be honest i don't think he would listen and this was something i kind of always felt was in the early stage of the light novel and even the anime did a good job of this this is the reason why a lot of people don't like the hero and his little gaggle of little harem and friends is because they're so like sure of themselves the fake virtuousness like the whole oh we're gonna defeat this and that and they're so easy to brainwash into thinking things that just are completely blind like they don't question certain things like it's like they believe what they want to be true so that they can feel like they're doing the right thing like they want to be the hero so badly that they'll warp their own reality it's these how i've always interpreted with the hero because he's always <sighs> the right word <laughs> i don't know if this is the right word he's he comes off pretentious a little bit because it just feels like any any type of reality that you throw in them even if the demon lord and why and all those and sophia all that sat there and said this is how the system works this is why we're doing things the way we are we're trying to save the world and reboot it yes it's not pretty what we have to do but this is for the greater good he'd ignore it all because he believes in this whole idea of oh there must be another way and it's like sometimes there isn't Sometimes you have to make decisions that are not pleasant. And I don't think he would understand that unless reality is really shoved in his face. And I think that taboo skill is what needs to get maxed out so that he actually understands, yes, this is how it works. Because I don't think he'd believe them. I think he, he'd believe them in one part, but then deny the reality so that he can keep living in a delusion. That's at least how I've always interpreted him. And I think it's really well done to be very clear, how they've created him as a character because of his past life as well and certain friend that's now a chick and how they kind of make that whole virtuousness. I, I think it's really well done. I really take my hat off to it. And that's the thing. I, 
I don't care so much about all the other characters, but I do like all the students and some of their backstories. Some of them, not so much, more so some are all right. And the sister that's not a reincarnation, she's just weird, obsessive, and creepy. Like, she's, yeah, Fifty Shades of Weird, that's for sure. But it, it comes down to the final point of, and this was something I wrote down, being evil to be the hero. Like, that's kind of what Wyatt and the Demon Lord and... In a way, Sophia is a little bit as well, but she's a little bit more a wild card as far as her personality goes. But with why, it's like, you've got to be evil to do the greater good. Like, you've got to do all these horrible things to save the entire world and everyone else in it. And sure, what they're doing isn't pleasant, but is there another way? No, because Dee's designed it in such a way that it's a comical relief to herself. So it's like, that's the only way you're going to be able to fix the system and then the, the final parts of the volume is white trying to get into that system and change things and the shadows and trying to fight back it's just like whew. like the whole volume itself a lot of it is explained partially in the past volumes but what i like about it is it's very cryptic in the past volume so you're kind of getting all these jigsaw pieces and these volumes now are filling in pieces they're re-explaining some parts but they're also filling in other major jigsaw puzzles to kind of make the whole picture whole again as we get into the final arc which is of course clearly defeating potamus and his evilishly douchey bag hide which i'm looking forward to because he's always been a character that i've felt that is very well written from a villain standpoint but you hate him. You hate every fiber in his body, and that's what makes it so good. It's just funny, the journey reading the light novels, I always used to get comments of people going, but he's a well-written villain, and it's like, yeah, that's that's not, what, I'm not saying that that's not true. I think he's a very well-written villain. I just don't like him, <laughs> like, because he's a douche, and that's the point. You're not meant to like him, but people kind of mis mistake not liking a character because he's a douche, as in you saying you don't like the character from a writing standpoint. No, two different things. I love the writing for him. I think he's super well done. So very much looking forward to volume 14 of So I'm a Spider, So What? Because that's where I think things are really now going to build up and up and up and up and up. And uh, the other volumes were kind of like a calm before the storm. This is now the real beating of the drums. And I feel like we're going to be into such a heavy roar going into the future volume. So again, I'd love to know your, follow your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you like this video, hit the like, subscribe, and I'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video.